malleable. We're moving from a time, we're entering a hybrid reality where we're moving more from real space, of course, into virtual space, and we're entering this time of coexistence between man and machine. And as we continue to experience the world in an intermediated fashion through our iPads, through our iPods, which I haven't won one yet, I'll mention that. Um, you can, <laughs> as, but if anybody's listening. As we keep on living and experiencing the world through digital media, all of that is malleable, and people are using this to great effect. Even people that you wouldn't think uh, might be, such as international organized crime and terrorists. So just a few years ago, uh, during uh, one of the recent uh, conflagrations uh, in Gaza and, and, and the Israelis, we saw members of Hamas sending SMS text messages to specific Israeli soldiers and battalions, telling them to report to the IDC, the Israeli Defense uh, Forces Center in Haifa, far away from the battlefield in Gaza. So, and they reported. And so they were able to move soldiers. This is, a, you know, Hamas, right? This is not uh, a, a business, but in fact a, a terrorist organization uh, by many accounts. And so you'll see more opportunities for both criminals and terrorists, as well as governments, of course, as Rafael points out, to insert themselves into this space. And so the big question that I ask is I see a world in which we live, and particularly younger people, uh, that I call in screen we trust. If it's on the screen, it must be true, right? This look at what happened on Facebook, it must be true. And I think there's not uh, perhaps a sufficient level of questioning of the data to Rafal's point. And because of that, uh, and because there's no authentication around big chunks of data, you can really do very interesting and unfortunately nefarious things with it. Mm -hmm.